All right, welcome to our review video for the quiz you're going to have this Friday. And this quiz will be over menu 2B and menu 2C. All right, so let's get this party started. Now, in Chapter 2, when we're talking about chemistry, uh, one of the main things we're going to talk about is the basic chemistry of carbon. And what's unique about carbon is it has four valence electrons. Therefore, it will want to bond with four things at once, including itself. So we can bond with other carbon atoms, which will allow it to form uh, chains, rings, rings of chains, chains with the rings attached, et cetera, et cetera. All right, let's zoom in over here on this picture of um, methane over here on the right. And in this picture, you're going to see that uh, it can bond with one, two, three, four things. Now, the X's in this picture are the electrons from hydrogen and the circles are the electrons from carbon. Now hydrogen has only one electron but it would like to have two to be stable. Carbon, like most Thanks. other atoms, wants to have eight but it has four so it needs to gain four more. So it's going to share these X's with these hydrogens and as you notice each hydrogen has two and then carbon is going to have its one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons and everybody's going to be happy. So carbon can form four bonds at once. Whoa! Now, to make carbon atoms kind of special, you need to add special things to them. And these things are called functional groups. Now, there's more functional groups than what you can see here on the screen. But for us, we just need to memorize these three. All right, Hydroxyls, which are an OH. They're polar. Think of the OHs in water. The oxygen will hog the electrons. It'll be partially negative, whereas the hydrogen will become partially positive. You're going to find these in alcohols, carbohydrates, etc. The amino group in NH2, it is going to be basic, so it's going to act like a base. So that part of the molecule will have a pH higher than 7. And you're going to find these in amino acids. That's the amino part of an amino acid. Carboxyl groups, those are acidic. So they will, that side of the molecule that has a carboxyl on it will behave like an acid where it will have a pH lower than 7. And you're going to find these in uh, amino acids and fatty acids. They're the acid part of those two molecules. Right. Now, dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis are some of the harder things that you've learned over the last two menus. But over the last two weeks, they should have start to seem a little bit easier. Basically, biomolecules are made up of subunits called monomers. And if you want to hook these monomers together, you have to do a chemical process called dehydration synthesis. Synthesis. And basically what the word means is dehydration means take the water out. Synthesis means to make. So you take the water out to make something. Now, this is an anabolic process. Remember, ana builds. And when you want to build something, that takes energy. And that energy is going to be stored in the new bonds that are created. Hydrolysis is when you're breaking apart a polymer. In other words, you're breaking off the monomers from each from the polymer. This is a catabolic process where you're going to break something, so the cat breaks, and you're going to release energy. All right, Hydrolysis, the word means hydro, water, lysis means to break. You're using water to break something. All right, let's take a quick look at this picture over here. Now, as you can see here, you've got a monomer that has a hydroxyl group sticking out. And here, the monomer has just a hydrogen sticking out. Well, if I take out the water, H2O, I can join these two guys together. And then in hydrolysis, exactly the opposite. Take this water, break it in half, replace the OH that you took and the H that you took off of this one, and you've broken them apart. So in this one, you're going to, well, let's write this down here. In this one is, oops, let's try this. This one's anabolic. So you are adding in energy. And then hydrolysis is catabolic because energy is being released as you break that bond. Oh! Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are molecules that have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in them. So the carbo refers to carbon, and the hydrate refers to the hydrogen and the uh, oxygen, because that's what makes up water. So you have this one to two to one ratio. And a perfect example would be the um, glucose, C6, H12O6. So that's a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. You have twice as many hydrogens as you do oxygen, and that comes from the chemical formula of water. 
The monomer of a carbohydrate is called a monosaccharide. Mono means single or one. Saccharide refers to sugar. So a monosaccharide is a single or uh, simple sugar. Now, all sugars are going to end with O-S-E. So think of glucose, sucrose, maltose, lactose, etc. All of those guys are sugars. All right. You're going to do the dehydration synthesis and the hydrolysis with all of these biomolecules. And so here we have a picture of what happens when you hook two monosaccharides together. Now, when you hook two monosaccharides together, you're going to create a disaccharide. And if you have three or more monosaccharides together, you're going to have a polysaccharide. So in this picture up here above, you can see highlighted in blue is the H and the OH that you're going to take out to do the dehydration synthesis, and as you go to, or let me rephrase that, synthesis, and as you go to the right of the picture over here, you'll see that you have a new bond. Now to do hydrolysis, you take the water, break it in half, and you replace the OH and the H that you took off during dehydration syn synthesis, and that will release energy. Oh. The functions of carbohydrates are only three, but they're very important. Number one, this is a primary source of energy for cells. This is what glucose is for. Uh, your cells will take the glucose and they're going to turn it into, a, use it to make a molecule called ATP that they can use the energy from. They're also part of energy storage, especially in plants where they store their excess energy in the form of starch. And animals like our cells will store some of the energy in the form of glycogen, which is also known as animal starch. Structure of some organisms is going to be comprised mainly of carbohydrates, specifically plants. The plant cell walls are made out of a carbohydrate called cellulose. That's what your paper is made out of, and that's what wood is also made out of. And insects and crabs have an exoskeleton. Their exoskeleton is made out of a carbohydrate called chitin. Lipids are very similar to carbohydrates. They're also made out of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygen, but they are not in a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. Lipids are all going to be nonpolar, so they're hydrophobic. They don't get along with water very well. They're also known as fats, oils, waxes, and steroids. Now, these guys don't really have a monomer, but uh, they are made through dehydration synth synthesis. And fats and oils typically come in the form of a glyceride. And over here on the left, we have a picture of a triglyceride. So let me mark this picture up for you. All right, a triglyceride, the tri refers to glycerol. Let me rephrase that. The tri refers to fatty acids, and the, gly the glyceride part refers to glycerol. So over here in this yellow is the three-carbon atom called glycerol, and over here we have fatty acid chains. And these fatty acids here are all unsaturated because they have a double bond. Notice there's some hydrogens missing. That's what makes them unsaturated. All right, right here in red, you can't see it really well, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to circle it right there. These bonds were all made by dehydration synthesis. If we want to break them apart, we would do hydrolysis like you've seen in all of our other molecules. The functions of lipids, there are four of them. Uh, number one, they are used mainly as an energy storage, especially in animals. These would be the body fat in humans and other animals. They're also the main component of all uh, plasma membranes or cell membranes. So it doesn't matter if you're in a fungus, a plant, a bacteria, a, an animal, you're going to have uh, your cell membranes made out of mainly phospholipids. Some uh, lipids will be uh, hormones, which are chemical messengers. Uh, these are mainly steroids, so think of like testosterone in humans. That is a hormone that is a steroid. And they can also be used as a waterproof covering. Uh, you'll see this on uh, plants, on the tops of leaves, and you're also going to see those on the bodies of crabs and insects. And these are waterproof coverings because, you know, you don't want too much water to surround these cells because that plant in the leaf, that could potentially drown. All right, proteins are a really, really important biomolecule. Uh, and in fact, you can argue that they are the most important along with uh, nucleic acids. Now, the monomer of a protein is called an amino acid. And an amino acid has five parts. All right? An alpha carbon in the, in the center. You're going to have a carboxyl group. That's where the acid name from amino acid comes from. You're going to have an amino group. 
The amino part of amino acid comes from that. And you're going to have a boring hydrogen, but you also have these side chains called an R group. And these guys are really important because this is what makes one amino acid different from another. And the shape of a protein is determined by the arrangement of the R groups. And that shape of a protein will determine its function. All right, zooming over here on this picture, we've drawn this numerous times. So alpha carbon in the middle, boring hydrogen on top. R group down below, and remember this is called an uh, amino acid, so the amino group to the left and a carboxyl group to the right. The amino groups and the carboxyl groups will be used in dehydration synth synthesis when you attach one amino acid to another in order to make a polypeptide, and that's what's our next topic here. Now, the bond that will hold two amino acids together in a protein is called a peptide bond. And this bond is made through dehydration synthesis. So if you look over here on this picture, you'll notice that you're going to use the carboxyl group from one amino acid, and you're going to use the amino group from another amino acid, and you're going to take out the OH from one and the H from another, and you're going to form this peptide bond right here. Now this is what we call a dipeptide because it has one, two amino acids hooked together. Three or more amino acids hooked together is called a polypeptide. Oh! Protein structure and its shape is really important to what what's job that it does. So think of form follows function. The shape of the molecule will determine what it does for the cell. And proteins have four level of structure creatively called primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. The primary level is the most important. It is the sequence of amino acids. In other words, it's the sequence of the R groups. And which R groups are in what position will determine what's going to happen in the secondary, tertiary, and quaternary ones. All right, so let's zoom in here on this picture. Primary structure is the amino acid sequence. Depending on how the R groups are arranged, that molecule will then go to the secondary structure, which will either be a pleated sheet, which is basically a bunch of folds, or it's going to be an alpha helix, which is a coil like a phone booth. The tertiary structure, you will take the secondary structure and you will fold it back on, on top of each other, and that's going to begin to give it a three-dimensional shape. And then a quaternary protein is when you add another protein in there, and that's going to create what is called a globular protein. Think of a glob of protein. And this is the shape that you're going to see in like hemoglobin, many enzymes, et cetera. All right. Remember, the most important one is the first one. The amino acid sequence determines the shape of the next ones. Oh! Protein functions, very important. There are seven of these. And remember the mnemonic device of escape time, E-S-C-T-I-M-E. The E in escape is the energy source. This is the third choice for living things. Uh, you'll do this only after all your carbohydrates and lipids have been used up. Uh, proteins play a key uh, important part in cellular structure. They make up the cytoskeleton. Microtubules, microfilaments will do that. Chemical messengers, remember hormones. Many hormones are going to be uh, proteins. Insulin is an example. They're also gonna be used for transporting materials. Think of hemoglobin in your blood. Immunity, antibodies are Y-shaped proteins that are used to defend you against pathogens. Movement, your muscle fibers are made out of protein, and actin and myosin are the two most important ones of those. But the last function here is by far the most important. Enzymes control all of the chemical reactions that occur in your body, and we're going to learn about those in more detail next week. All right, nucleic acids, we don't go over a ton of this in, uh, in this menu because when we move on to chapter 12, we're going to learn all the detail about nucleic acids. All right, nucleic acids are made up of uh, four elements. I make that five elements, C, H, O, N, and P. Think of N, CHOP is a great way to remember that. Um, they have a lot of important jobs. So you see this two, three, and four here? This is pretty much their functions. They're involved in heredity. That would be DNA. They're involved in protein synthesis. DNA and its cousin RNA are used in that. And then there's this one nucleic acid-like type molecule called ATP, and this is used in energy, and we're going to learn more about that in chapters 8 and 9. Now, the monomer of a nucleic acid is called a nucleotide, and a nucleotide has three main parts, 5-carbon sugar, a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. And there's five different kinds of these bases, 
Uh, four of them are found in DNA, and four of them are found in RNA. However, there's one difference between those two. But we'll learn about that once again in chapter 12. All right, so let's zoom over here on this picture of the nitrogenous, or I'm going to rephrase this, of the nucleotide. And remember, it's a sugar, a phosphate, and a base. So as you can see here, a five-carbon sugar. There's a phosphate group attached, and then there is the nitrogenous base, which will vary depending on what kind of uh, nucleotide that it is. Up above here, we have an ATP molecule. It kind of looks like an adenine nucleotide. In other words, that means that the nitrogenous base is adenine. But instead of having only one phosphate, it has three. And then there are bonds between these phosphates, and that is where the energy is stored. But once again, we're going to learn about that in Chapter 8 and 9. All right, That's going to wrap it up here for this uh, video, so make sure that you study well. And you do really well on tomorrow's Celebration of Knowledge. So, until the next time, we're going to catch you on that flip side.